For the last 10 years, I've worked as a behavioral scientist and human performance expert for a variety of government agencies. And it's interesting that the organizations that focus on the science and execution of human optimization are sometimes the very places where wellness is overlooked and office optimization is, shall we say, less than optimal. In this video, I'm going to share with you five unusual but science-based ways that I prioritize my mental health and well-being while also optimizing for work performance. Number one, change your physical space. I've had beautiful offices, I've had terrible offices, I've had no office at all. But the physical environment where you work matters. Research has shown that comfortable and well-designed physical work environments with nice lighting and noise control can contribute to higher levels of job satisfaction. Factors such as workplace aesthetics or cleanliness also influence job satisfaction and these effects have been shown across a wide variety of industries. So what can you do if you're required to work like this? The common way to deal with this is to summon your inner cat lady and decorate your office with things that bring you calm and joy. I happen to like puppies and inside out characters, but I am a psychologist, so can you blame me? A less utilized strategy that I use when I am stuck in an awful physical space is I actually move my physical location. If your office has any kind of common space, a conference room, a cafeteria, a chair near some natural light, move yourself to that location. Unplug your laptop and take it on a field trip. What work can you do away from your computer? Grab that work and walk away. Taking your work away from your desk gives you the same novel work environment that working in a coffee shop provides while still allowing you to physically stay within your office space. I'm currently working in the library at my current organization, but in the past, I've rotated through conference rooms, auditoriums, and outside picnic table. If your organization is insisting that you are physically present, but isn't providing you the physical space to support your well being, capitalize on your ability to physically move your body around the confounds of that organization. Even if it's just part of your day, changing your physical location and what you're actually looking at can do wonders for optimizing your workplace well being. The second unusual way that I make office work more tolerable is to add control and flexibility into my schedule whenever possible. Several studies suggest that having a flexible work schedule is associated with higher levels of job satisfaction. Flexible schedules allow employees to better manage both work-related tasks and outside life needs and preferences. It also allows you to have a sense of autonomy and control over the work that you do. These feelings of more autonomy and control contribute to both job satisfaction and overall life satisfaction. But how do we prioritize wellness if your organization insists on a one-size-fits-all schedule? Consider if there is a slightly modified version of the schedule that can alleviate your most stressful part of the day while also alleviating the pain point of the organization or the customer. When I was a resident, I worked in a behavioral health clinic that was open from eight to four. I asked if I could start my day a little bit earlier and come in from seven to three. This slightly modified schedule helped me to accommodate an hour and a half commute that I had at the end of each day, allowed me to spend a little bit more time with my new husband, but it also accommodated patients that wanted to come in for therapy before their workday. And yes, some military service members and veterans like to do things really early in the day. So in this instance, my preferences actually tapped into an unmet need of the customer identifying an organizational or customer need that you can satisfy with a slightly modified schedule may be your ticket to a slightly more bearable schedule. Another unusual thing that I do in workplaces where there is no boundaries on email, people are constantly sending emails out, and the expectation is that you're going to address these emails within minutes of receiving them. First off, all of my email notifications are turned off. I do not need to know the very instant that I receive an email. If you work in an environment where there are true emergencies, like a literal emergency room, there are systems in place to ensure that you are notified immediately. But if someone can take the time to actually fashion an email, it is unlikely that that is a literal emergency. 
Several studies have explored the negative effect of email overload, including increased feelings of stress, anxiety, and loss of control. One study found that emails are particularly stressful for individuals that receive a high volume of emails or individuals that spend a significant amount of time dealing with emails. This constant influx of emails can lead to something called hypervigilance. This is where individuals feel the need to constantly monitor and respond to emails, even outside of work hours. Beyond having my notifications shut off, I also limit my email usage to designated parts of the day. And these times might be a little strange. I'm a little bit of an early bird, so I log into my email system a little bit before work hours. I touch every single email and clear out my inbox every day. I sort those emails into four categories. The first pile are emails that I can answer in two minutes or less. If I can answer an email in two minutes or less, I go ahead and answer it and shoot out that email. The second pile are emails that are irrelevant. I was mistakenly CC'd or the content of the email has nothing to do with me, so I go ahead and throw those in the trash emails that have important information that I might need later, but don't require any specific action from me, go into the third pile, a file that I call references. Finally, emails that do require some action from me that's gonna take longer than two minutes, they get filed away into a to-do file. Once a week, I go through this to-do file and classify all of my to-dos in terms of level of urgency and importance using the Eisenhower decision matrix. So it's a little strange that I answer emails outside of work hours, but this strategy is actually a three-pronged approach to decrease email overload. First, it's providing consistent feedback to the senders. If you respond to an email as soon as you get it, the expectation is that you'll always respond to emails as soon as you receive them. Or worse yet, it could generate even more potentially unnecessary emails. Secondly, this strategy allows me to stay on top of all of my emails. No emails are lost in a sea of a thousand emails because I actually read all of my emails and make a decision for how I'm going to deal with each one. Third, it allows me to give the tasks that need my proper care and attention the appropriate time and attention that's due to them. Quick emails get the minimal time and attention that they deserve but things that require a well thought out or reasoned response or that need my focus efforts or attention are given the time and space that they deserve. A dedicated scheduled time to address them. Bonus, sometimes waiting a day to respond to an email actually makes responding to that email unnecessary. Questions or issues brought up via email may resolve themselves organically, or individuals better equipped to respond to that email may have already responded to it. My next unconventional workplace strategy is how I take time off from work. According to a 2018 study by the American Psychological Association, taking vacation or time off from work increases positive mood in 68% of workers. They also have more energy and motivation and less stress when they return back to work. Beyond the benefits to personal wellness, they were more productive and their work quality was better. But it's clear that even when people are on vacation, their work stress follows them. About one in five employees said that they feel tense or stressed while on vacation, and more than a quarter said they wound up working more than they planned while on vacation. A full 42% reported that they dreaded going back to work after a vacation. Which is why when I go on vacation, I tie myself to the mask, Odyssey style. I make it impossible for myself to do any work, even if I'm really tempted to do it. This is possible because I keep my work email and work work totally separate from my personal devices. I leave my work computer at home or in the office when I'm taking any sort of time off. I go even further and attempt a full electronic detox while I'm on vacation. In the past, this has involved having my husband keep the Wi-Fi password away from me or even planning my vacations so that I am specifically limited in terms of electronics. Things like hiking or going camping for a few days where I really just don't have access to be able to connect. 
This helps to ensure that I actually enjoy my vacation. And this study showed that employees' job and life satisfaction both increase when you actually enjoy your vacation time. The next quirky way that I safeguard my workplace wellness is by integrating physical activity into my workday. Moving your body can enhance mood and increase overall mental health. Regular exercise has also been shown to improve cognitive functioning, including attention, memory, and executive functioning. So in addition to my usual workout, I integrate physical activity throughout my workday. When I worked in organizations that had a gym, I loved having a midday sweat session. When I haven't had access to a gym at the workplace, I've invested in some lunchtime studio classes, or I've just taken brisk walks around the building. Engaging in these physical activities helps to get my mind away from work, as well as giving my body some much needed movement throughout the day. The Surgeon General of the United States recently put out a framework for workplace mental health and wellness. Since different workplaces and work circumstances allow individuals different opportunities to optimize their mental health and well being, this video explains the recommendations made to organizations as well as individual ways to support mental health and well being in the workplace.